Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? Ah, probably never. What I do know, this is still 4F Beauty, and if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. Fear not, Glorious Technicolor is indeed on the way. However, as you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it in the description, today's film is my first impression of the Kaleidos X Angelica Nyquist Club Nebula palette. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours I've used, how it performs, and what I think of it, and of course most importantly what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. Then my friends, you have the best seat in the house. As confirmed by Sammy the Slothstraw. It is now time to grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, so I would have shown you this in the intro. Forgive me if I get distracted, it's currently snowing. And when it snows, I turn back into an excitable five-year-old. Then the practical side of me is like, Ange, you walk with a stick. Snow will not help with that. And then that kid part of my brain goes, yeah, but snowballs. <clears throat> anyway, this is upside down. There we go. <laughs> a bloody good start now. I told you I was distracted by the snow. Right, so this is the pretty box that it came in. I didn't get the playing cards because I, I've got enough playing cards around the house anyway that I don't use. So, and it's got this gorgeous little, um, it's printed on but it's meant to look like a, like a stuck on gem. And this is rather nicely magnetic. I, I like that. It open and you have the same kind of design here. You have a thingy from Kaleidos which is your Club Nebula invitation. You're invited to join us for an unforgettable banquet of colour. On menu is a diverse curation of the finest, rarest shadows in the universe. And then goes on to say about tagging them in social media and stuff. But I just wanted to show you how well Kaleidos pack things. This was in one of those, you know those mailers that you very often see wine bottles sent in them where they're like slid into a bag and then the bag is blown up around it in like channels. This was in one of those as well as all of this padding on the inside. So you have your little quite dense sponge and then your palette itself is in a hollowed out section with more foam at the bottom and all the way around the sides. So, you know what? Kudos to Kaleidos. Which is actually more difficult to say than you would think. Um, because if there's one thing they do extremely well, it's packaging. So, here's the outside box, matches the design on the outside of the carrier box, but this one is obviously foiled, and it has all your ingredients on the back, pressed pigment palette, cruelty free and vegan, um, so being pressed pigment expect some potential staining 
from any shadows that have got a red in them or any super deep shadows. Um, da, 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 two multi-chromes, three sparkling dual chromes, one sparkling metallic and nine highly pigmented mattes. I did try and swatch it myself but it's, it's actually not that easy to get decent photos of unless you've got ridiculously high quality camera. But I did swatch the five sort of jewelled shades and you can see that the the one metallic is that sort of bluey silvery browny one that has opacity to it the other four have a lighter or no base shade to it from what I could tell so they will work extremely well not just on their own but also if you lay a darker colour down or a brighter colour down and then pop that over the top of it using a bit of glitter glue to give it something to stick to it would really it gives you a lot more to play with when you have some shadows that um, are less opaque so beautiful holographic overprinting with some very nice spot lamination going on as well and equally pretty on the back, they've not forgotten that nice and easy to open the escape pod palette had two ribbons here this one doesn't have that, it has like a thicker piece of card to help hold it open once again the super thick much much thicker than the majority of I call them condoms because it protects the shadows but this would be good if you did want to sort of lay it at the edge of your eye like this to get a straight edge for something rather than using tape as you know I just clean mine up with my cellar water afterwards so I'm not overly worried about that and of course here she is in all of her glory. Um, I am so totally spoiled for choice with this palette. I've deliberately avoided looking at anybody's tutorials that have used this palette yet. Um, obviously I've seen their thumbnails so I've got an idea of which kind of colours they've gone for. Um, but my views on this will, as always, be honest and fair. Right, this remains a teaching channel. Uh, by virtue of that, I zoom in very close, so it's just my eyes on screen. Um, I do that so that if you're watching me on a phone screen, you can still see what's going on, even if your eyesight's not that great. It's also easier for me to cut out when I have to keep pausing or wincing from pain. Because of my pain, I do tend to blend at a slightly slower rate than most people. But that does mean that the beginners can keep up with me. If you're more expert, feel free to speed me up during that bit. It's really not an issue. Of course, I might sound like a chipmunk on helium, but uh, that could be quite amusing for you. Uh, the only sort of issue with being that zoomed in is that when I look down to either add more pigment or clean a brush you do get a lovely shot of my beautiful widow's peak just there but apparently according to my wee Scottish Viking friend Will if you're having a wig made it costs more to get a widow's peak so my hairline is expensive right enough silliness um, I'm about to insert a clip telling you the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids because the way that shadow wears on those eye types is very similar but the actual application method you need to use is very different and the majority of people with deep set eyes mistakenly believe or are mistakenly informed that they have hooded lids um, and they're getting annoyed, they're getting frustrated because they can't get the looks they want 
this little clip will talk you through very up close again, just my eyes on screen, talk you through how to work out which eye type you have and the workaround for each eye type. Once that is done, I am going to be back to play with some pigments. So, I will see you at the other end of this clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. 
Hey, my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I'm going to start off with a, a quite loose but tapered up to a point blending brush. I'm not going for one of my ones that really puffs the shadow out. Um, because basically the wider the head of the brush, the further it will blend the shadow out. So I'm just going for a medium size. Obviously if you've got less real estate on your eyes, just use a slightly smaller brush to start with. Okay. I am really cooled by that lime green and the turquoises, but I think a lot of people are going to be doing that. So I think I might go, you might be a little bit shocked by this, I might actually go for the middle row with these sort of mauvey tones, although I really want to do these, but I think I might just do something a little bit different. So I'm going to start off with Nauru. There's a reasonable amount of kick up in pan, but I just I tap back off again. One there. And then just pick up the pigment next time round. Now I always hold the brush right at the very end and if the handle's long enough I brace it against the palm of my hand. This way you put as little pressure as possible on the lid itself. And I'm going to be doing my Viennese Waltz Blend, which, as long term viewers will know, is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back out again. Shall we begin? Indeed we shall. Um, I always start at the outside edge rather than over at the nose because if you do deposit too much colour it's much easier to deal with it when you haven't got your nose in the way. I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow, so about here, and just start laying some of this pigment down. Now the reason that I prefer, do you know what, I might put some of that green in after, I'm only going to go halfway across with this. The reason that I prefer doing the Viennese Waltz Blend is because if you just rely on the windscreen wiper like this, I'm 46, the skin on my eyelids moves, I've also lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Um, so of course the skin on my eyelid moves. But I know slim teenagers that have similar issues. So it's not just age and weight loss that can do it, it can be genetic as well. And if you just rely on the windscreen wiper, that's when you can get the lid folding over and you get those telltale white stripes. Dead, dead giveaway. Whereas by doing it like this, in circular movements, you're gently manipulating the lid round in both directions to make sure it all gets covered, but without tugging on it too much, so you're not causing any additional damage. I'm not quite sure what kind of shape I'm going for at the edge, so I'm just going to blur it out completely at the edges and then tidy it up with some micellar water later. It's the beauty of doing your eyes first. I used to do it the other way around, but uh, since trying it this way, I prefer it this way. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Now, the reason that I do kind of both eyes at the same time so to speak um, or like you know do each colour before moving on to the next um, there's a couple of reasons for this but with the fibro I can get random swellings anywhere um, and I have noticed that some mornings my eyelids are really really puffy so there's times when I'm doing exactly the same shape that I always use because obviously I know the shape of my eyelids now 
and yet when I relax my brow, if you look, this side looks curved, this side looks straight. It's because I've got swelling one side or the other. Now it's really super easy to deal with, but if this was swelling further down the eye, for example, it's not always as easy once you've put all the additional colours on and you've got it all blended and you've done a cut crease if you're doing one. It's not always that easy to work out. You can see they don't match, but it's not always easy to work out why they don't match. If that makes sense. And again this side I'm just blowing the just blowing the colour out of the edge because I haven't decided what I'm doing yet in terms of shadow just there. <laughs> and that went on really nicely. I'm just going to give the uh, my brush a wee bit of a clean. I use a clean washcloth for this. Um, I don't like using colour switches anymore. They're way too harsh on the bristles of your brushes. So I'm going to go in with the same brush and I'm going to go into Gravity which is that gorgeous green because it's just it's shouting my name at me basically. And if I don't use it I know I'm going to be annoyed with myself. So, where the two colours meet, to get the best blend possible, I've found it's best if you start off half on the colour, half on just your primer or just your eyelid. And just concentrate on blending that bit first. And then bringing the colour down. That's such a pretty colour. I know a lot of people have done this with the blue, but I'm one of those people, unless I've got a specific look that I've been inspired by, or specific colours that you have to use, like in my um, in my photo inspiration series. I tend to just I don't really know what I'm doing until I sit down. I try not to think too far ahead with things. I like it to be more spontaneous. You know, what am I drawn to right now? What mood am I in right now? Because there's times when I've thought, right, I'm going to do this, 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 this and this today. Then I sit down and I'll pick up the palette I was going to use and think, I really don't feel like using this palette today. And I grow a completely different one because I've found that if I do try and force myself to use a palette that I'm not feeling at that particular time, I never seem to get a look that I like. Everybody else seems to like them, but I don't. Okay, this is really lovely. Acid greens like this are not easy to get this vibrant, especially once you start blending them. And you can see I was blending that right from the start. I wasn't packing it on and then blending it. I was blending from the minute I put the pigment onto my lid. So that's good. Right, I'm going to go for a slightly smaller brush. Clean that one off. So this is the brush that I was using. I'm now going to go in with this one. 
because I don't want to lose the colour that I've got here but I still want to be able to bring this colour through where I want it if that makes any sense at all probably doesn't but then when do I ever make sense in this world? Really? If ever? I know I'm going to go into Queen of Blades which is the, um, the lovely deep teal and I'm going to start off just you can see I didn't tap off very much and I've got quite a bit of fallout coming out from that I'm just going to concentrate for the minute on blending this into that outer corner there I'm just going to grab my Real Techniques brush and just wipe some of that fall out of the way. I'm going to grab my Real Techniques, uh, I don't know what this is, 305 blender. I'm just going to use that to soften. In fact I might actually use that to apply the teal. Now I don't know if that patchiness is the fact that I do have a dry patch there on my lid or if it's the shadow misbehaving. I guess we will find out in due course. I'm just going to pop some of this on the outer third of the mobile lid. Like so. And come back in with a smaller brush. Just to do that sort of sweep up that I like. I haven't decided what I'm doing yet, re eyeliner, or if I'm even going to do any eyeliner. But you can fake it till you make it. You can see that has really drawn the outer edge of that eye up nicely. So let's um, repeat that over this side. We've been watching um, the second series of the UK RuPaul Drag Race. I'm loving it. I really am. I have some favourites already. Uh, Lawrence Cheney, I think, is just astounding. Some of the the looks and the outfits are just out of this world, they really are. Uh, I have a little bit of a soft spot for Veronica Green, although I do wonder if she's not playing Little Miss Goody Two Shoes, if she's not playing a long game. She just seems too nice to be true, you know? And of course, Tace. My little Welshman. I just love him. I, I just want him to narrate my life, basically. Oh, she Bendel a creme herself. I've never heard Bendel a creme used as an adjective before, but okay. Hmm. Mm, 
was happy just finishing in the shower and out the bathroom. If you can hear the uh, the water running, that is. Now, with this eye, I have super deep creasing here, as you can see, and there's that telltale striping, because no matter what I do, no matter how well I do the tiny, tiny little circles, um, the creasing there is just too deep. That's damage caused when I was sort of four or five years old at the ophthalmic hospital, so talking 40 odd years ago of damage. Um, you'll notice it most when I come to put pigment on here because I do have to break my own rule about not pulling my lid out. Uh, because otherwise what happens is the pigment builds up in the creasing and then throughout the day as it sort of dries up it just falls into my eye and down my face and everything which is not good at all. That's Hubby trying to sneak out of the bathroom. You can see the way he sneaks, honestly. It's like watching a Scooby Doo film, knees up to his elbows. So I'm right in tight on my eyes at the moment. Ah, so. uh, sorry, I was going to sneak past the camera so I no one knew I was there. Darling, you're wearing Scooby Doo pyjama bottoms and you have your hairy chest on display. People are going to notice if you walk past the camera. I think it will be more rating. X ratings, maybe. <laughs> so I'm just going to tidy up on this outer edge here. This is literally just a cotton pad with my cellar water. I don't like using tape because the way I see it is if the tape is sticky enough to stop pigments from going under the edge of it, then it's sticky enough that when you pull it off it's likely to do damage to your skin. By pulling at it too much which I really don't like. I mean as I said what you can do using the super thick plastic you could actually hold that there to give yourself a sharper line but to be honest that's just one more thing to juggle really isn't it I actually find it easier just to do it all and then just tidy up afterwards. Uh, now, regular viewers will know I always wet a shimmer, uh, particularly the first time I use it because I'm never quite sure how it's going to behave. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill your pigment, I promise you this. So I'm going to go in with this flat brush to try picking the pigment up. If that doesn't work, I've got a silicone brush here. Uh, I've got some, some of those lovely foam tipped applicators. They can also work. Foam tip applicators are great for pressed glitters, by the way, if you need to put some of those in. Now I'm, I'm waffling because I can't decide what colour or colours to use upon my lid. I think I might start with Firefly, which is the green. Very, very soft pigment. So we don't need to press into it very hard at all. Darling, could you do me a favour? Yeah. I forgot to wet my beauty blender. Could you do it for Ooh, me, please? Oh, I'll squeeze your little foamy egg. That sounds really rude, actually. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I've got pigment on the brush. I'm just going to give that a bit of a squirt. I'm just using a, a fixing spray. Setting spray. But you can use anything, really. You can use... Um, a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. Um, you can use a priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray, anything you like really. You can even use 
you know, save an empty bottle, rinse it out and put fresh water in it each day. But now that I've squirted it, the ferrule is moist. So I'm going to stick it in my knuckles and spin because the last thing we want is moisture coming down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in place. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a stick. And Hubby is trying to be rude with the squeezing sounds. I'm just trying to get the water out of it. Mm. Darling, you're squeezing it so hard, you're going to end up turning it into a lump of something that isn't sponge. How old are there? Thank <laughs> you. Love you. Nothing silly about me, I assure you. No, not at all. <laughs> right, so I'm going to pop this on the inner part of my lid. Ooh, look at that prettiness. Do you think there'll be a reindeer down the garden? No, darling, they're all up at the North Pole having a bit of a nice rest after Christmas. Oh, true. What about here? They have to get round the world in one night, love. Oh. Takes all year to prepare for that. What about well, an owl? I might find one of those. Well, you know you've got a statue of an owl down there, you donut. <laughs> okay, I really like that. That's super pretty. And the same thing on the other eye. And yes, I have wiped the brush off so it is dry before I go back into the pigment. I love the fact that some of these are named after sort of sci-fi shows that I've watched, like the bright blue is Seven of Nine, which of course is played by Jerry Ryan in Voyager. That's my favourite of the Star Treks. Mainly because I had a thing about Jakarta and his tattoos. I wanted to explore to see how many he had. Sadly, Hubby hasn't got any, but, you know, go <laughs> you, you, right. get, you get all the tattoos. Yeah, I know. So I literally just stretch this lid out only as far as I need to, to straighten out that creasing. No further. I'm not pulling it out to me ear roll. Um, just gonna blend that across the lid. Make sure there's no loose pigments. Bless you, darling. Okay. And let go. If you take the cold and flu, if you're sneezing well, like that. that. I took that earlier, but that was about eight o'clock. Yeah, you do another dose then. Oh, lovely. Little bit of block nose this morning. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, and as you can see, when I let go of the lid, I put the lid back. I didn't just let go and let it go ping. Um, it's just so it causes as little additional damage to the lid as possible, really. Yeah, so like I said, seven of nine. Jerry Ryan had the most amazing figure in that. Good Lord. Um, and one of the shades in here is called Cylon, which makes me think of Battles, Battlestar Galactica, the original one with Lawn Green and Dirt Benedict in it. And the dog. Biddy 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 <laughs> Right, enough wittering about old TV shows. So I'm going to go into the Laylac one called You're My Only Hope. Again, super soft pigment. So don't dig in too hard with your brush. Again, a bit of a squirt. Don't be rude. Making your own jokes up now. Make it so. No, that was Next Generation. Seven of Nine was in Voyager. That was Captain Catherine Janeway. And Chicote. <sighs> I just looked out the window and thought, Make it so. Make it so. Oh, because the, so. the uh, make it, let it, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow yes. thing, yeah. When the weather outside is frightful. <laughs> right, so I'm just applying this to the second half of the lid. Um, and I'm just going to use the very tip of the bristles to blend it in with the matte shade there. And then lightly drag 
the two shimmers together in the middle so there's a sort of seamless transition between the two. I really like that. Dry brush, go back in and do the same thing on to the sand. Watching the rugby yesterday, it was the uh, England Scotland match, and of course, being half Welsh, half English, it makes the Six Nations a little bit hmm. Because I'm I was brought up by the Welsh side of the family, so consider myself Welsh. So of course I support my fellow Celts. Uh, so I was cheering on Scotland just so well. So happy for them. Um, first win in Twickenham for something like 38 years. 1983, so I think it was. Which is 38 years, Chris. Yes. When, as the uh, Commentator said Kajagoogoo had just been knocked off the top spot, but Scotland were not too shy at taking the win, which made me chuckle. So congrats to the Scots out there, commiserations to the English. <sighs> Is the Calcutta Cup actually from India? The silver that it's made from is, mm, yeah. Yeah, it looks, looks, very, it looks very old Indian silvery, doesn't it? Well, that's because it was made in 1879, and that's the mm. first year it was presented. For those of you who don't know, because I was educating the husband yesterday, because he's not really interested in rugby. He's not really interested in any sport, really, bless him. Um, the Calcutta Cup is a cup that is played for every year between England and Scotland only. Uh, and it was first awarded in 1879. So, oh. there we go. A little bit of extra information for you. You see, this is what you get with this channel. You never know what I'm going to be blithering on at you about. But, what I am going to do now is I'm going to... Oh, that is so pretty. I'm going to pause you. And I am going to go off screen. Pop some foundation on. And some other base products. Sounding like Lawrence Cheney again. Two um, Peter Badgers for Lawrence Cheney. Two Rue Peter Badgers, aye. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll be back to finish off this eye look. Uh, obviously I've got a little bit of a while now before I come back and chat to you again. But for you, my darlings, it's going to be totally instant. See you right now. Hey my lovelies, I am back, okie dokie, uh, I did my usual soap brow thing, looking a tad werewolfish, but I like it, um, and I used rock hopper, this one, to shade my brows in with, which I think give me quite rakish air, and I like it. <laughs> right, flat topped brush, I'm going to go into red giant which has got a club embossed in it. It's the only one of these that's got a embossing in it. In case you're wondering. I'm going to run this along the lower lash line. Oh dear, someone's not very happy. It has stopped snowing. Maybe that's what she's crying about. Next to us got three little girls. They're gorgeous. All three of them. God help them when they're teenagers all at the same time though. Oh, I sense lots of slamming doors. That red is really nice. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped and chunky, but I mean you can use something like um I've got one around here somewhere I can show you. 
I should have a junky brush somewhere. Oh lord, I don't know where it is. Well, it might be over there with the ones I've washed, actually. Anyway, I'm going to go into a Samu, which is the peach. That would probably make a really, really nice blush. Because I'd need to go bloody light-handed with it. But certainly on deeper skin tones, I think that would make a beautiful blush. Mind you, I think Red Giant would make a pretty blush. So, if you've got super deep skin, some you know, someone sort of Noma Tang's skin tone. That red, that's how we're putting the um, extension cord through the window because we still haven't got around to getting an external socket done and he's going to go down and tinker about in his man cave and obviously he's going to need some light down there and he's going to need some heat down there why does he need light when it's still daylight well because he's covered the window up and he's got it all draped out inside like an ash warm tent don't ask, I swear my husband's a leftover hippie from the 60s. Hmm. I might have to do that peach and red. And I look up here at some point. I quite like that combination. And then I am going to go into Nova. This is just a really cheap lip brush that I've had donkey's years. I'm going to pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of my brow. I just want to make a nice highlight actually. I might try it as the highlight today, see how it looks. Trying out a different foundation today. And recently I've been wearing more natural, either dewy or satin foundations and this one's a matte foundation. So weird seeing myself with dead matte skin. I had to use my Laura Mercier glow powder to set it with because it was just it was too flat for my face, you know. I got so used to seeing it with a bit of shimmer and shine to it. Right, my lovely ones, I'm gonna pause you one last time. I'm gonna lob some highlight all on my face. It might very well be the Nova shade. I am yet to decide upon that. But I do have a brush that would fit. This is my Royal Lang Little Chic Pro highlighter brush, which would fit into that quite perfectly. Uh, so I am going to pause you, finish my face off, mascara, lippy, do something with the fluffy hair. I'll be back with my finished look and my first impressions on this palette. Don't go anywhere. Hey, my lovelies. Hair is, as usual, totally uncontrollable. It always is the day after I've washed it. But this is my uh, finished look with the Nebula palette. Or Club Nebula. The lip, if you're wondering, is a MAC Gloss. It's one of their Grand Illusion lip colours. And its shade is Peace, Love, Unity and Respect. And it's a tingly one, which I didn't realise until I put it on. And now my lips feel like I've just brushed my teeth, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> right. What do I think so far of this palette? Well, I've used one, two, three, 
four or five, that's my six of the, the mats and so far I'm liking how they've behaved. Um, I'll be interested to see how that red blends out because obviously I only used it um, under my lower lash line. Likewise I'll be interested to see how Void behaves and um, Cylon, so this end row here. But so far I'm really really liking uh, what I've seen. Now obviously I don't know what the wear time's like on this but if it's anything like other Kaleidos palettes it should be fine. Um, I did use that particular shade as a highlight and I think looking straight on, at least in the viewfinder that I'm looking at there and in my mirror, you can't see the telltale sort of like, you can sometimes get like a grey look but because this has got a clear base to it and it's just the reflection you don't really catch it until the light hits it so first impressions I like it I'm glad I've got it if um, you're interested in the Kaleidos format and formulas and you like this particular colour scheme when it restocks I'd say go for it because as far as I know they are only doing the one restock on this so if you want it be quick right what do you think let me know in the comments below what you think of this particular palette because you've watched it blend same as I have which colours are you drawn to in there? Would you have done this particular combination? Or would you have done like a lot of others that I've seen that have teamed this green with the 7 of 9 shade, which is that bright blue? Um, yeah, I'd be interested to know what you think and what your choices would be. Do you have this palette? If you've got it, do you enjoy it? Let me no. Um, are there any specific colours in here that you would I really hope that swearing didn't come up on camera that's the other side are there any particular colours in here that you want to see me use in the next look that I do just let me know in the comments section and that's what it's there for have a chat right if you're one of my 4F beauties please double check you are still subscribed YouTube are still unsubscribing you and they keep knocking all the notifications back to personalised rather than all not that they seem to be sending me emails at the moment anyway but in the hope they restart double check not just me but all the other channels you follow just check your subscription status check your uh, notification settings um, if you're new here and you've tripped over me completely by accident hi hello welcome I hope you've enjoyed it here uh, this is this is a, a pretty good indication of, of what you get with me I blether on about everything and nothing occasionally with input from the husband if he's around uh, usually while applying coloured pigments to my face uh, and if that sounds like the kind of thing that intrigues you then it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family because we are the nicest family on YouTube super easy to do hit that red subscribe button turn it from red to grey then you ring my bell ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube are going to send you some. In the meantime, as well as the rather large bag side upon which I am perched, uh, I also have a large back catalogue of other films you can watch. I've got other tutorials, I've got other product reviews, challenges, collabs, palette bingos, um, tag films, beauty box unboxings, 
I even read my favourite poem in one of them, so there's going to be something to interest you. So, basically, if you're looking for a little bit of me time, as I've said now, uh, for what feels like forever, to be quite honest, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, and get comfy. Right, my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.